In this video I'm going to show you how to replace and make your own gas burner for a barbecue grill. First expose the burners and figure out how they're mounted. They're all a little bit different. In my case they're attached with a little clip. First I remove this pin right here. Once I remove the pin I can lift the burner and pull it out. One end is held on by a clip. The other end slides over a manifold. You can see from this view how the other end slides over the manifold. This is another view of how it goes into the manifold. I'm going to use a piece of half inch conduit for my burners. First I measure the length of the existing burner. Then I transfer that measurement to the conduit. You can use whatever you have to cut the pipe, but I'm going to use an angle grinder. Now I'll take the angle grinder and deburr the ends. Now I take the existing burner and lay it next to the conduit. Then I mark out on the conduit where the vent holes are and the burner holes go. For the vent holes, I'm just going to cut notches with the grinder. These are very important. As the gas goes through the burner, it draws in air through these vent holes and it makes the flame hotter. You can see here the existing burner has holes drilled. That's a lot of holes to drill and I can get the same result by cutting in notches. Now I'm going to take my angle grinder and create a flat spot on the round tube. This will make it easier to drill the holes and it will prevent the drill bit from sliding off the side of the tube. Now I take the old burner and set it next to the new burner so I know where to start drilling my flame holes. I'm using a 3 seconds drill bit to drill the holes for the flames. These are a little bit bigger than the 16th inch holes on the existing burner but it shouldn't hurt anything. Now I'll start drilling the holes. I'm going to drill them roughly about a quarter inch apart and I'm going to stop about one inch from the end of the tube. Now the holes don't have to be in a straight line, just pretty close. Now I'm going to mark out where the gas transfer holes go. These holes are necessary for the other burners to ignite. If you didn't have these, you would have to ignite each burner separately. Here again I'm taking the grinder to put flat surfaces on the round pipe. Now I'll drill those holes. Now I'll check to see how far I need to flatten the end. And I'll use a hammer to do this. Make sure when you're flattening the end, the burner holes are facing straight up. Now I'm going to mark and cut the slot. I'm not going to be reusing the clips, so I just cut the slot all the way through. This is just so the burner lays flat on its mounting bracket. If I have to, I'll use screws to mount it to the bracket. If you move your grill around a lot, you'll probably want to find some way to fasten to the bracket, otherwise they'll vibrate loose while moving the grill around. Now I can reinstall the burner. Now I'm going to measure for the carryover tubes. The carryover tubes carry flame over to the next burner. If you don't put these back on, you'll have to light the burners manually. I measured from center to center of the burner. The measurement for my burners was 6 inches. First I'll cut these to length. Then I'll cut them with my angle grinder. Then I'll clean the burrs off with the angle grinder. The next mark I'll put on the tube is the inside edge of the burner to the inside edge of the burner. The next cut I'm going to make should go almost all the way through. Next I'm going to cut half the tubing out and make a notch. I 
I'll do this on both sides. Now I'll take a hammer and flatten out the edge. I'm going to make three of these. I'm going to drill a hole on each end. This will make it easier to start the screws. Because the burners are round, I'm going to put the screw holes very close to the edge so I can catch the burner with the screw. After trial and error with the carryover tubes, the only way I can get this to work was to cut the whole bottom of the tube out. Now before I install the carryover tubes, I took the two new burners out and drilled more holes in the area where the carryover tubes are. During my trial and error, I realized that there was not enough gas uh, entering the carryover tubes. That's why I had to drill extra holes. Here you can see what happens to the drill bit when you don't put a flat spot on the round tube. The drill bit walks. I'll do this part on both sides of both of the new tubes. Now I'll reinstall the two new burners and install the carryover tubes. Now you may notice that there are holes drilled in the last two carryover tubes I'm installing. Don't drill these holes. This was part of the trial uh, that I was doing to see what would work. They did not work, so don't drill the holes. Just cut the bottoms out like I showed you previously. These tubes still work, but I'm going to remake them because um, it takes a little bit longer for those two burners to light. You'll notice I didn't put the screws into the existing burners on the ends. Um, that's because um, the steel used for that is a little bit harder. And um, I was afraid I'd have to put too much pressure and break the tube and have to make two new ones. So I didn't put the two end, one, two end screws in. Now I'll do a quick test to make sure they all light. Now you can see how long it took for the other burners to light. That's because I drilled those holes in the top and I'll have to fix that. On the old burner there was a bracket for the igniter. That was also rusted away. So what I did is move the igniter in a place where um, it would shoot the spark and I used metal tape to attach it to the burner. If the metal tape fails, then I'll get a stainless steel hose clamp and attach it to the burner that way. Now I did forget to clean the junk out when I was doing all this and I didn't feel like taking it all back apart again, so I'm cleaning it out the hard way. I just wanted you to see that yes, I did clean it out before I put the grates back on. Now I'll put the burner protectors back on and the grates. Now we'll do a little bit more cleaning and it's ready to use. Now this is a Charbroil 4 burner grill and they do make a kit for it and I'll leave a link in the description. At the time of this video it was about $38. I know the kit would be a lot easier. I just wanted you to see that you could make something yourself and save yourself some money. Now if there's anything you'd like to add or anything you would have done differently, please leave a comment in the comment section. still hot. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Until next time, thanks for watching. Ooh, that mother is
still hot. 